Stop wasting your time in After Effects. Here's how to set up a template that'll load every time you start up a new project. All you have to do is create a new project file with your preferred folder structure. You can download mine if you want to, I'll link it in the description. You just save this project somewhere, then you just open up your preferences, you go down to new project, check new project loads template, load up the template file that you just created. You can also customize what you call that little weird solids folder that hangs out in your project. Now the next time you open up a new project, this one will automatically load and you can just go ahead and keep your project organized from the start. I highly recommend doing something like this working from a folder structure especially if you are working with other people on a team or on a freelance project keep organized it'll make you look professional and it'll really keep your clients and your other team members very happy Speaking of being professional, do you ever have to share your project file with someone, send it to a client, or archive it for your own later use? Don't just save your project, toss it in a folder, and call it good to go. In four years, when your client comes back with an inevitable change, and you have to dig open that old archived project, you are probably going to be hit with a bunch of missing files, and you're not going to be able to locate where those are without a lot of headache. Instead, the next time you finish a project, go up to File, dependencies, collect files, choose where you want to save it and export that way. It'll export a folder that's a single source and collect all of the footage that's used in the project into one location. It'll even generate a little text report that tells you all the plugins you need if you're going to open it up on a different computer. So the next time you're archiving a project, don't just save it, collect the files. If you want to be extra smart, before you collect the files, you're going to want to reduce your project so you only get what you need. First, you select the compositions that you want to keep, then you go up to File, Dependencies, Reduce Project. It'll delete everything in the project except for the stuff that you selected to keep. If you selected a comp, it'll automatically search through that and keep everything that's used in those comps, so you don't have to worry about going through and selecting every individual item. This is a pretty powerful thing, it really helps clean up your projects, but it also can be kind of destructive, so I'd recommend saving a copy of your project before you do any reducing. That way you have a fallback if something goes wrong. If all else fails, the undo button does undo this. So if you reduce out something and you meant to keep it, you can just undo, select that thing and reduce again. Keep your project files nice and clean. Reduce project. If you need to locate a composition in your project, just right click on it and select reveal in project. It'll open right up in the project panel no problem. You can do the same for footage layers or anything else that is located in your project. And if you need to find the original asset for something, you can right click and reveal in Finder or Explorer on Windows. Super handy. I use it all the time because I like to lose things. Okay, this is a real spicy one that'll really juice up your workflow if you're not already using it. Don't forget that After Effects has search bars in the timeline panel in the project window. So while you're working in the timeline panel, if you just hit Control F or Command F, it'll open up the search and you can just start typing for whatever you wanna find. I usually use this to search for properties so I don't have to dig down into all the drop down arrows and find the stuff myself. You can use commas to search for multiple things. So you could search position, scale, rotation. You can search for a color name and it'll just reveal only the layers that are labeled in that color. You can even search for methods and expressions, which I'm not quite sure why you'd do that unless there was something maybe wrong and you were trying to find where that was. Don't sleep on the search bar. I started using it, it really sped up my workflow. Even just searching past in a shape layer will save you time instead of twirling down all the different arrows it takes to find anything in After Effects. And bonus tip, if you shift click on a search, it'll save it into a preset library that you can automatically click and search for again. I also recommend using the search bar in the project panel, which you can use to locate missing footage or missing fonts and stop losing things throughout your project. If you work in After Effects, things just get funky sometimes. You get a bunch of cache files throughout your computer. Sometimes you get weird render Sometimes you get weird blah, 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 blah. Sometimes you get weird bugs or render blah. Sometimes you get weird bugs or render glitches that are completely inexplicable. That's why I live and die by this rule. When in doubt, purge all memory and cache. So the next time things are getting funky, go to edit, purge all memory and disk cache and get rid of that crap. This also saves space on your precious hard drive. If that doesn't fix your problem, try restarting your computer, restart AE, restart your career. 
Here's an animation workflow tip. If you're animating anything on one dimension, click on position and then right click separate dimensions. This allows you to animate individually on the X, Y, or Z if it's 3D and also opens up the ability to use the value graph in the graph editor. Now, I don't have time to go into all of that, but it can be really handy for getting specific curves and also keeps things nice and clean. You can do different overlapping animations between X and Y. I really try to use this whenever possible. It's also really nice for animating things like a bouncing ball where the Y is a nice animation curve and then the X needs to be linear. The only time this doesn't really work is if you have a specific motion path that the object is trying to follow, but whenever you can, separate dimensions. Bonus tip, I use separate dimensions so much that I set a custom keyboard shortcut to Shift D so I can quickly and easily travel, travel on multiple dimensions. dimensions. All right, so you already know how to parent a layer using the pick whip, but did you know there's multiple forms of parenting? If you parent normally, the child layer will remain right where it is, but if you hold shift while you parent, the child layer will snap to the transform properties of the parent layer, so it'll inherit the same position, scale, and rotation. I'll often use this to get the position and scale of a parent layer and then unparent the child to keep it independent, especially if this is like a composition with a lot of 3D layers, and I just need to get a layer where another layer is, but I don't want it to be a child. And speaking of not being a child, if you control click on the pick whip, it'll unparent the layer. And this even works if you have multiple layers selected. A lot of times when I'm animating, I like to work in frames instead of seconds or in time code. But if you're working on a, like a live action project or you're doing visual effects or working with an editor, or if you just wanna see how many seconds you have and aren't good at math, a lot of times you do wanna work in time code. Thankfully, it's really easy to switch between these. If you control click or command click on this number, it'll switch between frames and time code. For way too long when I was trying to determine the amount of frames between two keyframes, I would click on one keyframe and I'll go to the next keyframe and look at the number and try to do math, and figure out how many frames are in between them. And since I'm bad at math, I'd a lot of times get it wrong and I'd get confused. But if you click on one keyframe and then you alt or option click on another keyframe and you look up at the info panel, it'll show you exactly how many frames are between the two keyframes. And if you wanna see it in time code instead of frames, you just control or command click on the number to make sure you're viewing it in time code and do the thing again, boom, you got it. Before we get to the rest of the video, I wanna take a second and thank today's sponsor, me. If you enjoy this video, all I ask is that you subscribe and uh, like the video, leave a comment below, any thoughts, any suggestions, or any recommendations. Keep watching for the rest of the tips. Another keyframe tip, if you have a sequence of animated keyframes and you like the animation, if you just need to slow it down or speed it up, you can select all the keyframes and then Alt or Option click on the last one and drag it. This will stretch it out or compress it without affecting the curves in between. It's really nice to be able to do this because if you actually drag the keyframe, it would mess up all your animation curves and you get some wonky looking results. This also works with multiple properties or layers. Just make sure you're grabbing the last keyframe, otherwise it won't do what you're expecting. Here's a really good one. If you're trying to change the in or out points of a layer, trying to drag that layer to a specific place in your composition, you don't have to drag it and eyeball it and then zoom in and make those frame by frame adjustments until you get it right where you want. This is what I've been doing for my whole life. All you have to do is hold shift while you're working with layers and it'll turn on snapping. It'll automatically snap to the in and out point, to the playhead, to the beginning and ending of your work area and to the composition. Of all of these tips, this might be the biggest time saver. Don't forget to hold shift when you're dragging those layers around, make it muscle memory or else. If you're working with text layers and you've got a messy workspace, it can be easy to lose the character and paragraph panels. And sometimes they're just taking up more space than you want, so you close them down. There's this little checkbox up here that auto opens panels. Your text layer will automatically open up paragraph and character when you click on a text layer. You can hit this toggle character and paragraph panels button and it'll do exactly what it said. Keep your workspace nice and tidy, especially if you're working on a more minimal small screen setup. Don't hide those text panels when you need them. Don't keep those things hanging around. Shove them in a closet. A lot of times you wanna get the anchor point of a layer nice and centered or on the edge so you can scale it from a certain place. There's a lot of scripts that'll do this for you, but you can also do this built into After Effects. If you hit Y and you go to your pan behind tool or anchor point tool, and then you also hold down control or command and drag your anchor point, it'll snap to all the different edges and center of your layer. You can also right click and center anchor point. And then if you work with shape layers a lot, I also recommend going to preferences and checking the little box that says, always center the anchor point in new shape layers. 
For the longest time, I used scripts to do this, but now just using the anchor point tool and holding down control, I can get pretty much the same results even faster. <laughs> Take that, script. Okay, last one, and this one's a spicy one. I saved the best one for last. If you're trying to use the color picker to choose a color outside of After Effects, say a reference image or a color palette, you open up the color picker, you click the eyedropper, you hover over it, it looks right, everything's cool, you click, it messes up, it picks gray, quit After Effects, throw your computer out the window, and you're done. Next time, try hovering over the color with the eyedropper, and instead of clicking, hit enter on your keyboard. It'll select the color, and everything will be perfect. That's it. That's 15 ways to work faster and smarter in After Effects. If you like this video or you learned something, it would mean a lot to me if you would hit the like button and subscribe so you can find out when I post more. Let me know in a comment below if there's anything specific that you want me to cover. I'm all ears. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram to see what I'm up to. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.